slope. The slope of a line is a number that represents how steep a line is. It is represented by the letter m. So m is equal to slope. Let's look at how changes in slope affect the line. So here we have the line y equals m times x. And our slope goes before our x value and is multiplied by it. So here we have a slider that will let us manipulate m. And right now it is equal to 1. So you can see our line is the parent function y equals x right now. But what if we raise the slope? You can see the line gets steeper and steeper. So as your slope gets higher, your line gets steeper. But if we lower it and go beneath 1, you can see it's a lot less steep. And if we go negative, if we go to negative 1 here, you can see the line actually slopes downward now instead of upward. So negative lines will slope downward, and in the same way as positive lines will get steeper and steeper the more negative you make the slope. So now that we know what slope is, let's look at how we calculate slope. Slope is equal to rise divided by run. So what does that mean? Well, if we have a line, let's just draw an arbitrary line here. If we draw this. So let's look at this point. So if we're rising, we're moving up. So if we start at this point, rise would be this distance here, how far you go up. And then you would divide by run. Run is going to be the distance along the x-axis. Rise first and then you run across the air like you're in an old cartoon, and that would be our run. So we would divide this distance here, which is our rise, by these blue distance here, which is our run. So what would this be defined by with actual mathematical terms? Well, this would be equal to, our rise is going to be our change in y. So you start at one value, and you measure the change moving up. And then you would divide by, if our rise is our change in y, then our run would be our change in x. And we use the Greek letter delta to represent change. So change in y over change in x is equal to the slope. Let's say this point here, and we have this point here. So let's say this point is going to be the point x1, comma, y1. And then let's say this point up here is x sub 2, comma, y sub 2. So now we have two points, two arbitrary points, x1, comma, y1, and x2, comma, y2. So how would we calculate our rise distance here, this yellow distance? Well, it would be this y value here, and we have this y value here. So if we want this distance, we would just subtract y2 minus y1. So let's do that. We have y2 minus y1, and then let's divide by our change in x, which is going to be this x value minus this x value. So if we want this distance, we subtract x1 from x2. So we would write down x2 minus x1. So this is how we calculate slope. We need to calculate our change in y over change in x, and we do that by subtracting two y values, y2 minus y1, and then our two x values, x2 minus x1. Now, it doesn't matter which way you actually subtract these, as long as they're corresponding. So you could write it like y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2. But you couldn't write like y2 minus y1 over x1 minus x2. You have to make sure your 1s are in the same place and your 2s are in the same place. But both of these would actually give you the same answer. But we usually stick with this one.
because this is the official mathematical definition. Let's try an example. Here we are given a table with x and f of x. And we have the points 2 comma 3, 5 comma 4, and 9 comma 6, and we are asked to find the slope. So we can pick any of these two points, but I'm going to use these first two here, 2 and 3 and 5 and 4. So what is our y2? Well, our second point here is 5, 4. So our y2 is going to be 4. And then we subtract y1, which is going to be this value here. So that's going to be 3. And then we need to divide by x2 minus x1. x sub 2 is going to be 5, because that's what corresponds with our 4. And then we subtract 2. So what is this going to be equal to? This is going to be 4 minus 3, which is 1. And then 5 minus 2 is going to be 3. So our slope is going to be 1 over 3. So our rise is going to be 1, and our run is going to be 3. So let's say we had a plane axis now. We had just a little plane axis here. If we had a point, let's put one here. And then we wanted to find our next point. We would go up one. So let's say that that's one. And we have one, two. So we would go up one, and then we would go over three. So our next point would be right here. And then we could draw a line like that. Because one third is less than one, our line is going to be less steep than our parent function. Let's erase this. So just to prove a point, let's uh, try to find our next couple points and see if 11 over 6 is actually on our function and if we got our slope correct. So if we start with a point 5, comma 4, and then we need to do rise over run. So our y value is, needs to go up 1, so that's going to be 5. And then our x value needs to go up 3, so that's going to be 8. So our next point is going to be 8, comma 5. That's still not 11, comma 6, so let's do this again. Our y value is going to go up 1. So that's going to be 6. And then our x value is going to go up 3. 8 plus 3 is going to be 11. So yes, we did get our slope right. So here we have the points 1, 1 and 3, negative 6. So let's see if we can calculate the slope. Let's say this is x, this is y1, this is x sub 2, and this is y sub 2. And this time, let's do y1 minus y2 and x1 minus x2, just so I can show you that this goes both ways. It's so this is going to be 1, and then you subtract negative 6, and then you divide by 1 minus 3. So this is going to be equal to 1 plus 6 is going to be 7. And then we divide by 1 minus 3, which is going to be negative 2. So this is going to be negative 7 divided by 2. So let's try it the other way. If we have negative 6 minus 1, and then we divide by 3 minus 1. Negative 6 minus 1 is going to be negative 7. 3 minus 1 is going to be 2. So as you can see, we have the exact same answer doing it both ways. So as long as you keep them in order and have your 1s on the same side and your 2s on the same side, you will get the correct answer. 
So now you know what slope is and how it affects linear functions, and also the formula and how to solve for it.